I've, I've really said it throughout my, my history here is you take a player like Jordan Lewis and he's an exception. Right. And, I, and I'll consistently say it because he is and he's got a tenacity. He has a competitive nature and he just got, has a tremendous spirit about him. And that's what makes him a really good player. Do you guys really I mean, I find from talking to him that he's really fun to talk to because he's so intellectual and funny. Yeah. And do you guys kind of head it off with that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Again, obviously, the smarter, the better. Right. Because, again, it just makes it a whole lot easier to communicate with them. He kind of understands what's going on and then he's ready at the drop of a hat. Right. Again, when his opportunity arises, he again, he goes out there and he performs and he's been a ball guy his whole entire life. And um, again, with my experience with him is that he, he has stepped up and um, made plays consistently when he's been out there. A guy that does kind of fit the measurements is Donovan Nalumba. Didn't, was on the practice squad last year. How, how much better has he gotten since he first came here as an undrafted free agent? Yeah, now? yeah, he's grown tremendously, and uh, and really that that's all we can ever ask for and ever expect from anybody who's going to be here is come in, uh, 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 pay tremendous attention to detail, and then give us great effort, and then we'll work with that. Um, you have to have an awesome level of humility to do it, and that's what he has. And really, th those are the biggest attributes that we don't get to talk about. Is it's 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 really. That's the one measurable that counts. It's humility and then your willingness to go out there and battle every day. So it's toughness, right? I think toughness is, is, is really one of the one talents that it goes unmeasured and it's not talked about. It's rarely ever talked about, but it's one of the main things that should be, mental toughness and physical toughness. You mentioned the exception for Jordan on one side. The exception for Donovan might be that him, he barely played football before he came here at a high level. Has he shown the ability, you think, to be able to be an NFL cornerback, even though he only played NAIA before Portland State for a year? And all sure, that? right. And that's always going to be something that you're going to question until he's able to get out there and prove it consistently on a down-in and down-out basis. And obviously, that's going to happen when the lights come on, when the opportunity presents itself in these preseason games. Right, a few questions he's always going to have to answer is, well, you barely played, you come from a small school, oh, you didn't run a fast 40, so you have all these things going against you, but while you're here, none of it really matters. Again, right, against how you get out there and how you compete. It's still so early, but what have you seen from Jackson and Westry, a couple of guys just getting on here? Uh, again, I, I, I love what they're bringing to the table because, again, it's, it's, it's humility, right? And again, we're going to consistently talk about that because it's one thing that we ask for that everybody can provide. So, um, again, their, their ears open, their eyes open, they're chomping at the bit. Again, they're, they're buying in, they're working really hard at, again, figuring out what we're asking of them and working our technique. So, again, Rome is not built in a day, right? Again, we all love that cliche, and it's the truth because we got to come in and work consistently, and that's what they've done. You talk so much, you're talking here about humility and before and end. Again, you obviously want the most talented guys, but when you look over the last Super Bowl teams, especially, a lot of corners were taken fifth, sixth, seventh round and later. Is is there something uh, about the position, just the mental toughness required because you're kind of out there alone and you get beat more that, that kind of factors into the equation more so than maybe some other positions? Do you yeah, think? That, and that's that attribute, right? That's that measurable that we never ever talk about. And you just said it, it's toughness. Right? It's physical toughness and it's mental toughness. And again, there's something about which all the guys who've been able to perform at a really high level, regardless of where they've been drafted, they have all been really strong in those fields. They've been tremendous with those attributes. They've been mentally tough, they've been physically tough, and they've been disciplined. How difficult is that for you to spot during the process leading up to the draft? Because a lot of that you see on a day to day, but but it's kind of harder to pinpoint when you're just watching film and having limited contact. With yeah, it, and it is. It, it, it shows up in the tape, right? And that's why, again, trying to find guys, it isn't an exact science and you have to start somewhere. So yeah, that's what the combine is for. That's what all the pro days are for, right? Again, that's their measuring stick per se relative to everyone else. And But before that is the tape, it's the game tape, right? Anybody can get out there in shorts and run really fast and look really good doing drills, but it's the game that matters. So are you chatting with Byron Jones a little bit on the sideline? Where is he in his recovery? and? Um, just where's his mindset right now? Oh, his, yeah, his mindset is great. Um, I couldn't answer to where he is in regards to his recovery, but you know, he's 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 completely involved in what we're doing it and how we're doing it. And I so said we we love his character. You you know that he's such a great guy and um, it's such an integral part of our of our football team in, in regard to his leadership role. And especially again, we have a lot of young guys in our room again, which is really cool because we love being able to again just kind of groom guys and. And um, he, he's kind of the ambassador of fostering relationships, you know, and um, and that's just kind of who he is, man. He's down to earth, humble, and um, 
and smart, right? Again, he's just like a really cool leader. And that guy's, he's been there, he's done that, and he's really easy to talk to. So it's easy for guys just to get next to him and know him. How do you balance um, leadership as far as how much you lead the group and how much you pass on to someone like Byron? Than for him to carry on the leadership mantle. Well, I, I think it's just kind of uh, something that happens with fluidity. It's just natural, right? That that or, that organic nature of it all that we all just kind of completely understand the relationship between a player, a coach, what's necessary, how we're all in it together. But ultimately, I'm responsible for what's necessary, right? Again, uh, we we all become responsible for how we respond as a group. Because again, we're all in it together, but ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, the, the coaches are, are responsible for the necessities of it all. And then, the more our guys start to see that and understand that, well, then eventually they start to police themselves, right? And then, more and more, as you start to see that as a coach, you take a step back, a step back, and a step back, and allow those guys to really walk forward and take that leadership role. Chris, your your status and stature as an assistant coach in the league's changed a lot in the last few years. Are you hoping to get that shot to be an NFL coach, a head coach here shortly? If it comes, it comes. Again, it's the furthest thing from my mind. Am I prepared? Absolutely. Absolutely. What does prepared look like? You say I'm prepared. You're talking about for this job or you looking head at me, right? You, you're looking at me, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm prepared. That's what it looks like. No, so, I'm just messing with you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a great answer. Right. But yeah. I mean, does it when you say prepared for this one? Or if you got that call, which obviously is not going to happen today, but you got that call, I'm ready to go. Right. Well, it's kind of understanding what my job is now. Of course, yeah, I am prepared for my job now. And that's what it looks like, doing what I'm asked to do, when and where I'm asked to do it, and really being the best of what I can do and what I can be. And that's where the preparation takes place, right? You've got to formulate your plan, have to have a philosophy, have to have an identity, have to have a method, and you have to be knowing and willing to put it all, all your practice into effect. So once you put it all into effect, now you're able to grow it and foster it and get a bunch of guys in who buy in and believe in it. And then ultimately, that's what creates and informs championship football teams and a championship culture. So that's ultimately what you're preparing to do as an assistant coach, and then when you get the opportunity, now that's when you're able to unfold your plan. What is your philosophy as far as the defense? What is your philosophy? Eliminate you the big play, get the ball, get people on the ground, have a great time doing it as one. It's a brotherhood. It's about a tribe, not about a team. The tribe exists for one another. You've worked with some great coaches. How has Rod influenced you the most? Oh, man, Rod is awesome. Um, <clears throat> I, I, there isn't enough that I could say about him. Just kind of in regards how he has uh, embraced me and allowed me to come in and um, um, imp implement a lot of um, what I've known and understand. And, and um, like I said, I, I, can't, I can't thank him enough for just trusting me with that facet of the defense.